The Right to Die movement is filled with diverse opinions, colored by loss, pain, and even hope. Former NPR talk show host Diane Rehm knows all about the personal side as she witnessed her husband's slow and painful passing despite his wishes. Afterwards, she decided to deeply examine the issue in her new book, When My Time Comes. Diane Rehm, welcome. Margaret, thank you. Oh, I read the book with lots of memories of my own personal experiences. I mean, this is a this is an important topic. I mean, we're all going to die. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're all going to be survived by somebody who needs to know what we want. Who needs to know, and we have to have those conversations early. Don't wait. Tell people, your doctor, your relatives, your friends, your closest, what it is you want. Right. And what would be a good death for you. Your very last chapter is talking to your grandson about what you want, and I thought he showed incredible strength because that was tough for him. I'm sure it was tough for you, but I can't imagine how much closer that brought you as he had the gift of knowing your heart. Absolutely, and I assure you, I asked his mother first yes, yes, if yes, I could did. have that conversation right. with him. He is such a a mature 20 year old. He sounded like but it. But I wanted him to know because we are so close exactly what I want at the end of life should I develop a serious illness mm -hmm. that has no cure in sight. I wanted him to know his mother, his father, everyone in the family. And that's how we make this conversation go forward, not only with our families, but with our friends. There are now nine states plus the District of Columbia which have medical aid in dying. When I started this book and when we started our film documentary three years ago, there were only three, so we're making progress. Right. Your husband's passing was so difficult, uh, and it wasn't what he wanted. What, no. what caused that disconnect where he could be so specific about what he wanted? There he is. You guys look so beautiful together. Um, I love and not that being photograph. able to. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame I you. I love it. What was between what he wanted and the way it turned out? The law. We were in the state of Maryland. He was in a nursing home. He had made his wishes so clear to me, his daughter, his son, our daughter, our son, and his doctor. And the doctor said, I'm sorry, I cannot help you. The only thing you can do is starve yourself, take no food, no water, no medication. It took him 10 long Gosh. days to die, and he did suffer at the end. I was with him the whole time. I think people do choose what is called the said, which is exactly that, starving oneself mm -hmm. to death. But it's a long, painful, drawn-out process, and people should have the right to choose medical aid in dying. My hope is that the documentary that we've done on which this book is based will help spur the conversation to get to state legislators as you here in Washington mm -hmm. have done. So you have that right. And I, who now lives in Washington, D.C., I have that right. But, but lots there of people do not. Lots, most people do most not. Most people do not. So this is written in <clears throat> anthology form. It's interviews with various people who have various opinions, some of which um, are from people who disagree Absolutely. with your position, obviously, and, and probably mine as well. But I loved that. I. I don't know that I changed my mind. I wonder if you did, but I understood things better. Exactly, and it's very important to understand that other perspective from those who think that God should be the only decider or that 
They want to have everything that medical science can provide to keep them alive. I, when my time comes, want to have the right, the option to use medical aid in dying. So that's what I hope for each one of us, that we have what we want and that we are not forced to continue to live on when we don't want when we to. Don't want to. Um, let's talk about Brittany, one of the young women that you wrote about in this book who had uh, brain cancer, which is what my brother-in-law uh, died of as well. Oh, and, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, it's very oh. tough, and the, the symptoms and the progression of the disease can be extremely tough. And if you have to face that at a young age, my brother-in-law was 51, she was much younger. Oh, um, tell me a little bit about her. Brittany had gotten married to Dan Diaz. The bridal photographs were absolutely gorgeous. She began having terrible headaches and having seizures. She was diagnosed with a severe form of brain cancer. So they moved from California, which at the time did not have medical mm -hmm. aid in dying. They upped and moved and established residency in Oregon, which of course was the first state right. to have medical aid in dying. She said she was going to die around November 1, but she wasn't quite sure. On the morning of November 1, she woke up with a terrible headache and had a terrible seizure and said to Dan, I'm doing this today. She was surrounded by her mother, her husband, her dear friends took the medication and went peacefully. But that required a move, pulling up everything right. and moving from California to Oregon. Not many of us can afford to do that. Exactly. That's that was a blessing for her, but you know, for most of us where our families live, etc., exactly. it's it's also important. So I just want to leave people with this because you know nobody <laughs> wants to think about their death necessarily although I'm kind of a control freak so I've planned this and I have a playlist so good. And I'm <laughs> good I just need good. to make sure everybody knows Absolutely. most of it's in paperwork so uh, the point is I think you could actually be very hopeful about this as I read the book I thought well what a liberating thing to have this discussion when my own mom passed away I had to make decisions for her and I had no idea what you she wanted. You had no idea because um, you hadn't talked with her. Painful like Terribly. you wouldn't believe and I think this is a good thing for us to all think about and I just appreciate you sharing your own life and the lives of these these other Thank folks. Thank you and remember it's not one conversation it's many conversations, small ones, but so meaningful. Perhaps beginning with, Mom, you know, I've been thinking a lot about my own death lately. I wonder if you've been thinking about what you would like at the end of life yeah. as a way to begin. start a conversation. Mm -hmm. And let's hope as parents that we volunteer it so nobody has to ask. Exactly. Um, that exactly. would be very special. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoyed listening to you for many years. Oh, Just thank stellar you. and this is a wonderful, wonderful gift to people. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Diane speaks tonight in the Great Hall at Town Hall Seattle. The event starts at 730 and we posted full ticket information for you on our website.